Hello, I'm Bromok. Welcome to my Red Power 2 series. Today, we'll go over on the internals of my logic room. I'm calling it the logic room because it helps me build all the little logic circuits for the uh, Red Power and makes it really e easy to, to maintain. So the idea behind it is to have a project table one project table for each of, of the subcomponents. Let's try to get over there so I can show it to you. Stone wire, easy, internal buffer, then a re regulator underneath it. Ugh. So it has the uh, what you should keep the uh, in this is what you keep the regulator stocked at. Which, and this is the inventory that it uses, and this is what you keep the inventory that it's attached to on its output stocked at. Which we see it is. Once I click on here, you saw this went down. And then actually, and then this buffer is getting refilled. But you saw that, it's like, oh, it's already filled, goes back, and then it stuffs this back. I spent about six hours trying to figure out that little process that when we were stuff back, how to try not to get it to stuff back. I wouldn't mind it just cycling through the whole system, but the problem was that all these filters were getting stuffed back with the more than just the item that it was trying to send out. So I did various things like item detectors, transposers, so that's why these cover blocks are here. I just haven't bothered removing them. Because maybe I come up with a different system that it's not that. So the system I decided to come up with well, eventually, I'm sure other people have already, is to color each of these the that it's filtering and so that when it does come back only the stuff that it's filtering can be considered stuffed back to it so once a an available slot opens up in the regulators it will come get unstuffed and then eventually it will get stuffed back so that's how we um, make sure that all of the regulators get what it needs. So the thing is, if you increase the number of components that it needs, you'll have to increase this, and there's an upper limit of number of colors. Um, so if I do cells. I might be have some issues. I don't know. I might just have enough co colors for it. I'll f find out when I get there if I n need it. So that's how it we split individual components out. Ah, there is a term for this. It's been so long since I've actually had my integrated circuits stuff in high school. Uh, it's been 20 years. Dang, it's been 20 years. I feel old. Okay. Um, I digress. So we split out the feedstock, which is from my sorting machine, from these th three chests. Right now, you know, I've done, gone through this so much that I've got so much crap in here, it's not all that funny. Oh, I should probably... Okay, this would have been a bug. I need to color that red too, just in case. 
All right, so now here's my feed stock. This chest right here, this filter, is for the subcomponents of the of the main logic circuits. So when I build stuff from that, I put it into this chest. Stone wire, stone cathode. So now it's feeding the supply chain w with that. If it, if any of these are stuffed since it's marked red, it will get sent back into those three redstone chests from my sorting machine. So that's my feedstock. And it will just go through, cycle through, all these filters will go, cycle through, until there is one of these that are open. This one is not in stuffed mode. It's my redstone torch. That's what I'm low on right now. But I've got so many ca cathodes. Uh, cathodes. Cathodes. Cathodes? Where are my cathodes? Cathodes! Okay. I have so many of cathodes in, in my system. I really don't need redstone torches at the moment, which is kind of good because I'm really down low on redstone. I need to go replenish. Um, digressing again. So, there's a filter on... So, on my, the feedstock. There's a filter on that. Just, it's empty. All of these filters paint it red so that when there is no separation to be done. Uh, on those filters, it will go back into the s s sorting supply pipeline and just go NF not. Ad infinitum, which is why we have this lever. Turns it off, primarily to try to reduce n some noise and also to reduce potential lag on the server. So I only turn it on when I'm actually uh, working in here. And so I've only really ever needed timers. Well, let's turn that back on. So let's make a few of these. There we go. And now it's all running to go resupply this particular regulator. It's all kind of done. I mean, it's the regulator got fold back up, so it's going back in and restuffing everything. Okay. Since I am running low on that, let's see where is my pointers? That's my cathodes. Yeah, having 64 of these always on, on the cathodes, little extreme. So let's reduce down to 16 each. Really don't need that many. So my cathode generator has plenty of red torches now. The problem, main issue I have here is the that this is actual inventory space. So it, it actually will take up your resources to do the particular filter. I, it's from a programming standpoint, it's actually less of a test surface, so it's I don't mind it too much. But uh, you know, I can understand. Oh, I can understand it. I mind it, but I can understand it. LRM is doing this for free. And for fun. 
just might mean I might have to cheat and make my query robot go even further. Uh, I really run frames so I can do this legitimately in pure red power. I really do. So, I believe that's it. I, I don't think I've missed too much. Other than that, you know, I spent six, eight hours on this thing trying various things and. Eh. Did too much Enderman farming for the Ender Pearls, for the re Retrievers, which I ended up not needing. But this is kind of it in a nutshell. If anyone can make improvements on it, I would be happy to see it. But for now, this is it. I'm going to cover this up and make it all nice. And set up some additional re regulators and project tables to uh, get be ready for other subcomponents I may need. Or not subcomponents, actual uh, logic circuits that I might need in the future. But I'll add it as it comes in. So I will talk to you later. Check out my chicken farm because I'm starting to run low on run low on fried chicken. Um. I think that's good. Okay. I will see you later. Um, um, actually, no, wait, wait, wait. While I'm still here, let's check to see if there is any progress on my... Uh, no, not much. Ugh. No, there's somebody... Oh, there's somebody dying. I hear them. They're on fire. Okay, so three, two, one. Gotta remember that. Come on. I, I hear a skeleton dying. Die, skeleton, die. The problem with the system right here is the fire will also burn the items. So if they don't move off, or they die on top of the f fire, the items that they do will be completely gone. So come on, come on. This is, I know, this is exciting, but, um, oh, so exciting. Cell 3, 2, 1. Alright. The close to death. Die. Come on, die. Remember, this was a, a prototype for an Enderman foam, so I can do Ender Pearls for a. Actually, I did ca catch a couple of Endermen in, in here, but. They kind of got burnt up. The, the the drops got burnt up. Alright. The drops are getting burnt up. Maybe there's just way too many of these now. There's something here. Anyway, that would be it for now. I know I was just checking on a f few things. It's more than just my logic circuit, but 
it's still uh, an idea for a mob trap that I'm trying out. I want a nice little cheap intermin from which I don't have to do uh, all the pistons. Like, piston base is fine, and I guess that's what I'm going to have to do down there. I do have the space for it. Mm, that's going to be an expensive build, though. Uh, I need to think on that one. Anyway, I have no idea what I'll be doing for next time, but I will, off camera, I will clean up and I'll you know, stone off the uh, uh, here, make it all nice, hide all of the, the wiring up, hide the regulators. And uh, I'll see you next time. I mean it this. Bye.